And now it's time to focus on put and delete. So basically if you want to update the product or you want to delete a product, how will you do it? So that's what we are going to see now. Now before I do that, I just want to remove these extra spaces from here and let's look at the code. So basically we got this main.py where we got uh, all the product in the list, we are still not working with database. And we basically have this methods like get and post. Now in this get, we are fetching all the products. And in this get, we are fetching a product by its ID. And then here we are basically adding a new product. Okay. Uh, so now let's try to update it. But before we do that, in fact, a lot of things we have to do before we do that because if you can see my shirt color has changed it's a new day and i have to do that steps once again to run this so first of all i will run this server before that i have to change my environment so the virtual environment it is using now oh just creating a new environment no no don't create a new environment i'm using a wrong thing i, I have to activate it so activation done and now it's time to run this and also I will disable my copilot or snooze it for some time and let's run this and this will load the server no problem with the server loading and we have to also run the front end make sure that you don't run this in the environment so you have to deactivate this so that you will come out of the environment and now you can run the front end and you have to switch to front end and say npm start now the front end started as well uh, but again, we the front end is not fully configured yet, and that's why you can see it is failed to fetch. So there's no need to run the front end. I don't know why I ran that. Muscle memory, maybe. Uh, but let me just go with this. So there's a problem with the front end. That's fine. Okay, but, but the back end is running. And the way you can test it, you can just go to localhost colon 88, uh, 8000 and then slash. Here we have to say docs, which will load your... Uh, swagger in which you can test all the things and we need to first test it out if it is working so that we can continue so it's still working nothing is wrong yet yet okay so let's go back here and now it's time for the update now if you want to update a product how will you do it first of all you need a function and we'll name this as a update product function and then this will uh, also accept the product itself but then with product we have to also pass the id so which particular product you want to update, right? So you can ask for the ID. So I will say ID of type int. And then you will also ask for the product because that's what you're going to update. Now, if you want to update a particular field of a product, you can also use patch, but we'll not be doing that here. We'll be only using put. And this is where you will update. And we also do the mapping for this. This should be app dot. Now, instead of using get or post, we are going to use put. And here we'll say the same URL, which is product. Cool, right? And now I can basically write the logic for updating a product. So it says there's an error on line number 36 and there is an error. <laughs> we, we, so you can see it is expecting a block. But I'm going to write a code for updating. Now when you want to update, you want to update the product from the products list with this particular product, right? And uh, which one to update? Now you have to basically iterate between these products to find which ID it is matching with one, two or five and six, and then you can do it. So in that case, I can say use a for loop. I'm going to start with I uh, in range, or maybe I can also use product, but then I can't replace it. So let's go with the range itself because I want the uh, index of it. So I will say uh, for I in range and I will go till the last value and for that I have to say I mean second last value so length of products now once you have this range it will start from zero it will end at three because we only got four products here right and of course in future if you add new products this will go to the second last value so if the value if, if the length is 10 it will go till nine okay then you will basically check for each product so you can check products of zero or sorry, products of i, and then you can check the id if it is matching. Okay, if it is matching, that means I have to use if. If it is matching with the id, whatever you have passed, in that case, for that location, that means products of i, for that location, replace it with the product which you got from the client. Looks good. And if this is successful, you will return product added successfully. Again, this should be a JSON data, but I'm sending a plain text, but that's fine. It, it works. And what if you don't find any products? Of course, this will come out from there. And then you will say return no 
product found or you can say product not found whatever works so this is the update code and i want to verify if this is working so the moment i saved it this got reloaded i can go back to swagger now or the docs refresh this and first of all let's get all the products from here and we'll update one of it so execute and you got all the products let's say i want to update uh, this table here so i will just copy this and the id is six remember that go back to put because this is what you want to do update product and you will update so you will say try it out type here six and replace this schema with your schema in fact you can uh, change the values from here but i will just paste it then i will keep the idea same i will change it to table desk and i wouldn't table for your computer okay and then price since we have added this description the price should go up that's what we do right and let's say the quantity remains 20. okay so we have changed name price description but not id and quantity let me execute let's see what goes wrong nothing went wrong here uh, it says product added successfully that's great that means if you go back now here and if you try to execute this once again and look at the product so we got table desk changed uh, description changed price change okay that's how update works but now let's work with delete so let's go back here and now you help me it's okay now the question is how will you help me when you're watching this video think just think about it what will be the logic i will get it telemetry uh, so i will say app dot it should be delete the method okay and then you have to also pass the uri we'll go with the same uri and as i mentioned before all these uris are same what is changing is the method here okay so let's define our method so we'll say def uh, define delete or def delete product okay now question arise based on what value you want to delete maybe a user will send the entire product and then you can delete it or our uh, id is enough right because every product will be different based on its id so I can simply pass an ID here. Let's do that. So accept the ID. So I'll say ID colon int. And based on the ID, you will delete it. But again, you have to iterate, right? Because you have to match with ID it is matching with. So we'll say for, in fact, the same code which we have written before, for range. And this will be length of products. And then you can check if products of I in fact you have to match the id if it is matching with the id which you mentioned from the client side in that case delete the products of i as simple as that and if this works you can return product deleted and what if you don't find the product so you have to some mention that somewhere so it's a return same thing product not found so once we are writing no product, product found and once we are we are writing uh, product not found uh there should be some consistency right and i'm not doing it okay so we got these products here right now i want to delete let's say uh, six itself or maybe in between let's say i want to delete the second one two so the idea is two let's go back to uh, okay i think we have to reload this put and delete delete is here and we are going to delete two so i will just type two here and execute nothing much and it says product deleted that's great Let's go back to get all products, try it out, execute, and here we go. You can see we don't have to anymore. And that's how you update and delete. But I want to show you the code once again, and this is it. So this is update product, where you are getting the ID, getting the product, the new details which you want to add, and then you are iterating, and then you are basically checking for each ID if it is matching or not. The moment you find the match, you will update the product from the list and that's how you update. For delete, same code, it's just that instead of updating, we are deleting it. Cool, right? Uh, but then remember that everything what we have done now, we are doing with in-memory list. So this is a list. But in the real world, we don't use list, right? We use a permanent storage. Maybe like Postgres or MySQL or any type of da da database. It can be RDBMS, it can be NoSQL databases or somewhere. Maybe a file or maybe a CSV file. So let's see how do we do that in the upcoming videos.